in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 25th of june friday of the 12th week in ordinary time and this day is marked as day of the seafarer let's remember all those who are working and traveling on the sea and today we remember saint eurosia a martyr and larissa will give us more details about the saint of the day on the 25th of june we venerate saint eurosia who is the local saint of jaca a spanish town in the pyrenees devotion to saint eurosia has always centered around jaca but spread into northern italy during the middle ages eurosia's date of birth is unknown different legends cite the date of death from anywhere from the early 8th century to the late 9th century Eurosia's cult developed at a time of great animosity in northern Spain towards the southern Muslim half of Spain. Eurosia was believed to have been either a French or Bohemian princess who was adopted. Her mother was the future Saint Ludmilla, who converted her adopted daughter to the Christian faith. Upon turning 16, she was promised to a Moor in an arranged marriage. As she crossed the Pyrenees, She planned to meet her future spouse at Jaca. However, this area had become a war zone. A Moorish captain named Aben Lupo planned to wed Eurosia for himself and attack the Bohemian party. Eurosia did not wish to marry, particularly not a non-Christian, but rather wished to live her life in devotion to God. Thanks to the bravery of Eurosia's escort, The young bride to be managed to escape through the mountains and hid in a cave. She was pursued and eventually caught. Eurosia invoked the heavens and a lightning bolt hit the ground near her would-be captors. She was ultimately dragged from the cave by her hair. Her limbs were amputated and she was beheaded, receiving the crown of martyrdom. At the exact moment of her death, a terrible storm came, terrorizing her tormentors. Devotion to Eurosia grew when a shepherd eventually discovered her relics thanks to the appearance of the theotokos that identified their resting place. Her head remained at the original simple shrine while the townspeople, recognizing the importance of Eurosia's relics, brought her body to Jaca, which had been designated the capital of the Kingdom of Aragon. As Jaca was a stop on the wildly popular Camino de Santiago, Eurosia grew in popularity due to the steady stream of pilgrims visiting her relics. Perhaps it was due to pilgrims seeking spiritual healing or restoration that she became the patron intercessor of those experiencing demonic possession. It is unclear when Eurosia became patroness of the demonically possessed until 1947. When the bishop of Jaca prohibited the practice, those who were afflicted with possession were brought together in a procession and followed an urn carrying her relics. Pope Leo XIII affirmed her following in 1902. Placing all our petitions before her today, let us pray. May the martyr Saint Eurosia be our advocate, O Lord, that we may firmly hold the faith she professed with her lips and sealed in her blood. Through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever amen My dear friends we continue our reflection on the gospel of Matthew Today we have the reading from chapter 8 verses 1 to 4 When Jesus came down from the mountain great crowds followed him and behold a leper came to him and knelt before him saying lord if you will 
you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us enter into the mind and heart of the leper in the experience of his encounter with the Lord. He had probably been a leper for a long time. The leprosy was probably just small patches in the beginning that could be hidden. And knowing the strict Jewish law, he and his loved ones might have tried to cover up the first signs on the skin. Gradually, as the white, flaky area started to spread, it was impossible to hide, and eventually he had to bow to the law and be sent away. What was the reason for this exile out of towns and separation from any contact with others? Of course, there was the fact that leprosy was contagious. But beyond that, these signs of inflammation and disease of the skin indicated that the person was a sinner. They were an external indication that something within was decayed or unclean. That was the real reason a leper was expelled from society and from contact with anyone. Any person who even got close would be rendered unclean themselves. So a leper had to live in isolation in the wilderness. This disease was bad enough, but the isolation the rejection was worse. The feeling of being unclean, contagious, untouchable was horrible. This suffering would often lead these lepers to examine themselves over and over again asking, What have I done? What inner disorder is showing itself on my skin? Until the disgust that others felt became their own as well and they started to see themselves as filthy and unworthy of human respect. If, in the beginning, they were forced into obeying the law, eventually they believed they deserved it. If, in the beginning, they were forced to shout, unclean, unclean, whenever anyone would come near them, later they would do so willingly to warn others that they were bad, that they were toxic, that they were to be avoided and shunned at all costs. Most people just altered their path and avoided them. Sometimes people would shout obscenities at them, just to make sure the lepers wouldn't come close. Most just looked afraid. This leper, living in these conditions, must have heard about the prophet from Nazareth who cured so many of their illnesses, who wasn't afraid of being defiled by sinners but ate and drank with them, who spoke of God's merciful love and gave people hope. And then on that day, the day spoken of in the scripture passage, hearing the sound of a great crowd coming down from the mountain, he came out of his cave dwelling, shouting, unclean, unclean, to warn them of his presence. And then he saw the man he had heard so much about and only dreamed of ever encountering. There was no pride in his stride, no airs in his attire, no aura of privilege and superiority about him. He was just so ordinary and yet there was something so very different about him. At that moment, this man looked at him. There was no fear at all in his eyes, just compassion and love. It was a look that turned the self-loathing into hope, that there was a salvation for his unworthy, filthy soul after all. 
This hope gave him the courage to go against everything he had been taught to do as a leper. And he ran up to the Lord, fell on his knees in front of him, and boldly said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. And then the fear began. What had he done? He had broken the sacred law of the Jews. What would the people do to him? Furthermore, he had asked this holy man to touch him, a leper. Like any good Jew, he shouldn't even be looking at him. These thoughts must have run through his mind in that moment after he blurted out his request for healing. And then the Lord reached out and touched him. He touched him, the untouchable one, and said, Of course I want to be made clean. The fear dissolved, the shame left. He was a new man now, cured externally, clean within. From utter despair to hope, from self-loathing to self-respect, from fear to joy. This is the transformation that takes place in the presence of the Lord. He had restored the leper to communion again because he had compassion on him. He has that same compassion for everyone who suffers. Be bold. Ask him. Let him restore you to communion too. My dear brother and sister, the psalm proclaims that those who have faith in God will be blessed. Having faith in God is the meaning of having fear of the Lord. That is, acknowledging the Almighty for who God is and what God can do and also realizing one's mightlessness in the relationship to God. If one can fear the Lord and trust in God's continued actions in one's life, then one will be blessed with family, more faith, and even fortune. Let's pray that psalm now. Your response Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall eat. You will be blessed and prosper. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see Jerusalem prosper all the days of your life. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Prayer for Relief from the Coronavirus Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. 
We thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic. We pray that the vaccine be available for all our people, even the poor and those in rural areas. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle. That they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray for God's blessing now. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank Father Noel Dikunna for sharing his reflection with us. And we remember all those who are celebrating their birthdays today, especially Brother Jeswin Tom Binoy Carmelite, Father John Lobo Carmelite, Princeton Fernandez Kinnigori, Patsy Fernandez from Kuwait, Vinil Suarez from Dubai, Gena D'Souza from Kulshekar, Mangalore, Razil Siana Seravo from Takode, Mudbidre, and Yuva Mendonsa from Shirwa. Wish you all a happy birthday. God bless you. It's also the birthday remembrance of late Elizabeth Desa from Paniyo. May the Lord grant her eternal rest. That's all for today, my dear friends. As you are already aware, we print every year Bible diary, which has all the readings, the Psalms, the prayers, reflection, and all the novenas and other daily prayers. We invite paid sponsors on the occasion of your birthday or the wedding anniversary or in remembrance of someone who has passed away, you can sponsor the page. We will print those names and intentions on that particular page. Then we will announce and pray for those intentions every day during the audio reflection. And also, we will be sending those diaries according to the number you sponsor to your home address. And the money that we collect from this noble mission is used for the education of the blind children. So you are most welcome to sponsor the pages as you have done in the past years. You can contact me on my number 9481263229. 9481263229. Six three two two nine. I am Father Stephen Pereira. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.